Welcome to Pulse Worship Online at Cathedral of Hope. Service will begin in about five minutes, so take your seats and get ready for a great night of worship. Hello and thank you for worshipping with us at Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ. Thank you for spending a part of your day with us. My name is Reverend Dr. Neil and I'm the Senior Minister here at Cathedral of Hope. In just a few minutes, we're going to get our worship started. Our fabulous musicians are going to offer a worship set with uplifting music, praise and prayer and an opportunity for you to share your gifts for the benefit of our church. We'll hear a word of hope that is sure to leave you inspired and we'll close out with more music that will carry you into the rest of the week. Now is a great time to check in. Just follow the link in the comments to register your attendance and offer any prayer requests and celebrations you'd like us to attend to over this week. There are so many ways to stay connected to Cathedral of Hope throughout the week, and in the description of this video, we are offering links to our small groups, our weekly email, and our Facebook CFAM. Make sure you check those out. Finally, we post content throughout the week on Facebook and YouTube, so please make sure you hit the subscribe and follow buttons. And if you like this worship service, please give it a thumbs up and hit share to invite your friends to worship with you. With all of that said, worship is going to begin in just a minute. So find your seats and we'll get started shortly.
Well, welcome to Pulse Worship. We are so glad that you are joining us this evening as we continue our sermon series at the table. My name is Reverend Andrea, and I am joined by the fabulous Reverend Jeremy Rose as we continue this conversation. And tonight we're talking about what it means to try new things, to try new things. And we're going to get uh, way into that when we have our conversation this evening. But before we do, there's just a few announcements I want to make. Actually, there's just one announcement I want to make. If you have signed up for a thank, uh, to, to deliver thank Thanksgiving baskets. Those baskets are due this Sunday. Um, we'll be collecting them here at Cathedral of Hope in our parking lot um, starting at 8 a.m. Um, and if you have not heard anything about this Thanksgiving basket uh, program that we have, we've been doing it for years, we, uh, we provide a whole Thanksgiving meal for families who are in need. So I invite you during the season to pray for our whole community, um, pray over the baskets that are going to be donated, um, and to pray always for those folks who are experiencing food insecurity. We know there's a lot of need in our community right now, and we're trying to address that need both through um, the Thanksgiving baskets we give and all the things we do to support our community through all of our program uh, and all of our amazing uh, programs like Taste of Hope, Bach, Eye Care, um, and, and all we do as a church. Um, and so uh, this Sunday between 8 and 10.30. And we want to give you an opportunity to also give back to Cathedral Hope. This is an opportunity to where we praise and worship God through our giving. And you can give in three different ways here at Cathedral. While we're uh, worshiping distancing, you can text to give, you can mail in your offering, and you can go on our website into the Realm Portal and give a one-time gift or a recurring gift. But as we're distanced, we have so many uh, points to where we need to worship God. And giving is such an opportunity for us to actually do that, to praise and worship him and to give back part of what he gives us. And to continue all of these programs that Cathedral Hope is doing right now, even while we're distanced. Absolutely. And as we um, just very shortly jump into our amazing music with Voices of Hope, all of our fabulous musicians, uh, uh, Reverend Jeremy, would you mind offering us a prayer to transition us into worship? It would be my pleasure. Dear God, we just thank you for who you are. We thank you for the gifts that you give, the blessings you pour out on us. We just thank you for all of the many things you do, and we, we thank you for our beloved Cathedral of Hope. God, as we gather together in distant areas across the country, across the world, we come together as a family, as a chosen family, as, as a church um, of the beloved Cathedral of Hope that we are here. And we just ask that you pour your blessings out on this moment, that you pour your blessings out on everyone involved in this worship service. Pour your blessings out on our voices of hope and just make this moment a time where we all feel connected wherever we're at. We pray these things in Jesus' authority. Amen. Amen.
Well, Cathedral of Hope, we know that God makes all things new. And so as we gather at the table to continue our conversation at the table, um, we are talking about all the new things God does. And indeed, we're talking about God's call to us to try new things, to live into that promise that God gave us that new things will come. Um, and I think we can look through all through the scriptures to find that message from God that new things are coming if only we are willing to embrace them. And indeed, we're trying a new thing today and I am super excited um, to have a special guest that we may know. This is the Reverend Jeremy Rose and you will know him um, because he is our uh, our guide, our muse, our CFAM go-to yeah. person. And so I was hoping as we get started on um, in our conversation, Reverend Jeremy, would you be willing to share just a little bit about who you are? I would. It'd be my pleasure. You know, I've been at Cathedral of Hope for about a year. It was about this time last year that I started attending the chapel service. And so I've been here uh, a while. But uh, my background is from the evangelical world. I've been a pastor for many, many years. And um, I never could buy into that evangelical mm -hmm. background. I couldn't buy into that really conservative nature. And God has really taken me over uh, on a journey over the years. And about three years ago, it really came to a head. I was just in a, a conservative church, um, and there were just a lot of things that were going on that I just really were re rebelling against. And um, I came out with progressive theology. And that changed everything. Southern Baptists aren't into that, that progressive theology. So at that time, um, I lost a church. I lost um, a, a nonprofit that I was involved in and really had a whole life change. I was rejected by a lot of my family and didn't know if I would ever be a pastor again. I just didn't know where that would lead me. And, and I was led to the Cathedral of Hope and, and was able to have a conversation with Reverend Neal and um, at that time, I'd never even heard of the United Church of Christ as a denomination. And he really talked to me about that and took me on this journey. And I am right now in the process of getting my credentials in the United Church of Christ and hope to be a pastor in the United Church of Christ. And that all is set to happen uh, in February or March to get my privilege of call. So yeah. it's just been a joy to be here and, and a joy to experience this community and be a part of the community and, and really um, be part of CFAM now that we're distance and, and that experience. And, and it's such a pleasure to be here with you and be able to, to do this. Absolutely. Well, congratulations Thank on you. this process that you're on, this journey you're on. And I'm going to call an audible because uh, Jeremy and I had a conversation about how we wanted to frame our conversation today. Of course, all of this is off the cuff, um, but we're going to try something new. And, <laughs> and thank you for going with me. Your story is profoundly compelling. And I think that um, many folks in our congregation in many ways would, would identify, do identify mm -hmm. with the journey that you've been on. We've come from these very, this evangelical, much right. more conservative background and experience. Many of our congreg congregants have been um, in that background. And if you feel free to just uh, ch like live up in the comments where you came from because it really expresses the diversity of our congregation and folks have made this shift uh, to try something new right. right and it takes a lot of willpower a lot of sort of moral fortitude mm -hmm. a sense of self and a sense of God's love right. to be able to tr try on new theological beliefs mm -hmm. and your story and I want to get into this maybe sure. in a couple parts your story speaks to not only the the journey that you're on and right. your willingness to open your mind and your heart to try something new but also the risks the dangers right. of it um, would you talk a little bit about first of all where you came from and what what helped you try on these sure. new beliefs yeah and, and trying new things is a difficult journey I mean there there might be points where you do lose things but that might be the right thing to do in your journey and and, and I grew up in the conservative church and was called into ministry at a at a pretty early age and um, I joined the Air Force before I wanted to get some college money right yeah. joined the Air Force to do that and um, I have never been a pastor who has taught hate regardless of what my theology is right mm -hmm. I've, I've never taught that hate and um, when I was in the Air Force I really that was the first point where I was involved with an LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. I met, and this was back when, you know, it was Don't Ask, Don't Tell, right? right. And I met someone um, who confided in him he was gay, and I was in this community. They accepted me as a straight man into that community. And I suddenly realized all of the stuff that, that had been taught from the pulpit was just absolutely wrong. Mm -hmm. And when I got out of the Air Force, um, there was a period of time where um, I wasn't in ministry. I went back to 
uh, college as an adult mm -hmm. to get my degree, but I stayed into what I knew, this conservative theology, but I still couldn't buy into that. I couldn't, uh, you know, buy into women couldn't be pastors, women couldn't teach and all of this. And um, I always rebelled against that. And at, I finally came to a point in my last church where I just couldn't do it anymore. I was um, a pastor who was counseling, and I was counseling two teenage girls who were struggling with sexual identity. Mm -hmm. And uh, God really placed upon me, he's like, you, this is it. You cannot do this anymore. You mm -hmm. trying to do this from inside this evangelical course isn't working. I've got other plans for you. And, when I came out with my theology, Andrea, I, I lost my family. My wife asked for a divorce. I have a daughter who's estranged from me over my theology, you know, and, and so it totally changed my life. I left my life in Colorado and, and came here, and I spent about a year not knowing what I was going to do. Mm -hmm. It was trying those new things. It was me saying, I've got to embrace that new theology. I've got to try uh, um, coming alongside that type of Christianity and seeing where it leads, mm -hmm. even if it leads me through some difficult and dark times. But I did find a community. I found the Cathedral of Hope, and I found people who would love and support me and who I could love and support back mm -hmm. and go along that journey. And I'm trying new things. One of the biggest things I'm trying is that I've never grown up with liturgy, right? And we're a very liturgical <laughs> church, so this yeah. is something so new for me. And I love it, trying these new things in, yeah. in this new walk of mine. That's amazing. I think, uh, so I heard a number of things I want to pull out of that. Um, the, the first is which you are very clearly grounded in a sense of conviction. Mm -hmm. And I think throughout this whole sermon series, we've been talking about exactly that groundedness right. and, and boundaries and mm -hmm. how having a sense of a clear sense, not only of who we are and what mm -hmm. we believe um, and our convictions that are brought to us in a various mm -hmm. different ways, right? Many of our convictions, our morals, our ethics right. are taught to us at tables just mm -hmm. like this. Um, sometimes, what we learn to believe is different than what we've right. been taught, which is the story of, of your faith and your journey. Um, but we also have this, this clear sense of what God is calling right. us in our life. And each of us has a call um, that we are all on a journey to recognize um, and, and live into. Mm -hmm. But what I heard from you is that a lot of your um, trying on new things came out of a uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. And that you had this sense of, of God's call for your life, which was different than what your experience around right. you was telling you. But then you started to meet people mm -hmm. who were willing to meet you in the right. middle and share pieces of themselves. And I can't help but think about um, my kid, Nico. Um, my kid, Nico, is a profoundly picky eater. Mm -hmm. So we sit here at the table, at the right. table. Right. Um, this is a daily Right. daily interaction with him and so anything will make even if he's had it before and he likes it it's like his mind turns off and he's ready to build the wall almost immediately and so he would eat the same thing every day and it would be uh, an italian sub from from subway right. uh, like on toasted wheat bread and he would be with nothing on it right. just the meat and the cheese and that's what he would eat mm -hmm. every day for the rest of his life i think right everything else is putrescence it's, right. it's the worst for him right he hates it um and Yesterday, I'll tell you a story. Yeah. Yesterday, so on Thursdays at his school, they get to eat out. Um, it's a lear it's an earned privilege for right. kids who have decided to take leadership roles and they work mm -hmm. for it. So every Thursday, they get to eat out and bring, bring money. And he was filling out his sheet for what they want he wanted to have for his meal today. Mm -hmm. And it was pizza. And he ordered one slice of meat pizza, pepperoni pizza, and, getting wild, <laughs> a slice of buffalo chicken pizza. What, like... <laughs> Michelle and I were just right. completely right. confused. And so, and Michelle said, his friends are getting it. His friends have, right. have modeled for him a new thing to try and he's realized he's liked it. And so all the way from kids mm -hmm. up to adulthood, it's about relationship that helps to exactly. take that step into trying mm -hmm. new things, right. which I think is um, is amazing. And And so what are the things that we block right mm -hmm. because we're not we're not right. willing to to take the next step is really it's I mean it's a challenge so the other piece I wanted to lift up um, is this sense of um, how do you come back from a hard situation when you've tried something and and it you, you how did you keep going when you lost everything it, it, it was difficult but it, it does go back into this this trust right mm -hmm. in this faith and looking for relationships I'm a big uh, proponent of community and relationships and there were a lot of little relationships that led me through this time 
I was very blessed in the fact that coming back to Texas, I, I grew up here and I had mm -hmm. family here. Yeah. So I had family who was able to nourish me you know, and, and bring me back to a, a healthy point. And, um, you know, there were a couple of churches that I did visit mm -hmm. before being here, but I, I really have to affirm the fact that just being in the chapel service and then meeting people, you know, uh, in the traditional services, mm -hmm. if you will, and, and, and spending time with them and being able to share my story yeah. and being able to say that, you know, one of my messages is, is there's hope for evangelicals, right? right. There's right. hope. And it's these conversations. Yeah. I was able to walk out of this because of conversations that I continued to have right. and was open to listen to people mm -hmm. of uh, that thought differently than me mm -hmm. and being able to have those conversations uh, uh, with those people. One of the a relationship that really changed me. Richard Foster is, is is an ancient mystic. He's a Quaker, right? You don't run into many Quakers these days, yeah. right? And and I was very fortunate. He's written many books, and I was able to meet him and walk through some of some, some spiritual discipline practices that evangelicals just don't want to deal with, right? Through meditation and and journaling and things that that I had never experienced, and I developed this deep relationship with him, and he helped me take that step out of that conservative mm -hmm. mindset set. So, you know, having these conversations right. is so important, but being able to understand that we're not going to agree on everything mm -hmm. and, and we don't always need to, yes. but doing it in safety and really listening. Yes. So often we get into these conversations, it's like, I need to make sure I convince this person of what I believe, mm -hmm. or, or they really need to hear everything that I believe. And, yeah. And I don't think that's always what we what we have to do. Yeah. I think just being open and asking questions and finding out why that person believes what they believe or why they're coming from that point is is so important. I think yeah, you 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 raise a really important point there. And um, just to reflect back, you, your own life story is a testament to to somebody walking with you and mm -hmm. and bringing you along. And what I've seen you do over the last year and really over the last six months, nine months when we've been in pandemic is shift. And that in many ways, you now are one of the people in our community that works with folks to bring mm -hmm. them along and take the next step, whether it's in their, their personal spiritual right. life as they're trying to mm -hmm. make this shift from their past conservative thoughts, views, beliefs, when they're on a journey. Um, I know uh, mental health mm -hmm. is a really important piece for you as you navigate mm -hmm. and walk with people as they try on um, new ways of right. living life, right? And new ways of accepting God into their right. life. And I think that's profound. You're one of our small group leaders, which um, is we're really grateful for right. your leadership in that um, where you ask these questions and bring people in um, and if you're looking for a small group to do exactly this right. work to walk with people cathedral of hope.com slash small groups mm -hmm. is a great opportunity for you to get connected and one of the rules of our small groups and we talked about this I know Reverend Neil and I talked about this when we preached a couple mm -hmm. weeks ago is um, our small groups at Cathedral of Hope we always ask people to use this as an opportunity to try on new, new things, things. Right. just like you're going to the store mm -hmm and trying on a new outfit. You may not like what you try on. It may not fit. Right. It may not look good, right? Um, and I know that I like to go shop with people because I can put it on and someone say mm -hmm. like, that's not right. that's not the look, right. look for you, right? right. Um, and that's what our small groups are able to do, right? Or um, just just the opposite of that, you go to the store and you say, I'm, I don't know, right. I would never wear that. And someone says, you look fabulous. Mm -hmm. Right? And that affirmation, that relationship is so important. Yeah, and what's important about our small groups and our community is is, is we don't take this approach to, as uh, one size fits all. We have, mm -hmm. we have different communities and different small groups that appeal to a, a wide variety of people. And, and if you get connected into a small group, you may need, you might try that on and it might not fit, but that doesn't mean that another group right. might not fit. You know, talking about right. picky eaters. I, I detest tomatoes. I can't stand tomatoes, <laughs> right? You can change that into ketchup or right. marinara sauce and I like it, but I don't like tomatoes. But every two or three years, I'll try a new tomato. I'll try a tomato. Yeah. Have my taste buds change? Has the tomatoes change? Is it from a different place? Yeah. So I don't discount and say, I'll never like tomatoes. And that's the same thing. Just because we try something, it doesn't work out immediately, doesn't mean that it might not work out at a different time or season in our life, or we don't have a new place that you can maybe try that same thing in a different environment. And that's mm -hmm. the beauty of our, our community and our small groups. Absolutely. It's all about cultivation. Right. It's all about growth. And I think that that's what we try to do here, honor here, that experience at Cathedral of Hope, is to um, recognize we're all on this spiritual journey. 
And we're not on a spiritual journey alone. We're all in it together. And so um, I know our time is about mm-hmm. up as we want to continue our worship together. And I want to thank you, Reverend Jeremy, for spending this time it's with me and pleasure. having this conversation. Yes. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, as we close out, would you mind uh, again closing us in prayer? It'd be my pleasure. Most High, the time that we are able to spend together uh, as a community and, and as a church is, is just a tremendous blessing. And, and we all know that during this time of distancing and quarantine, it looks different. But looking different doesn't make it um, not as correct as us being together. Um, it, it's still us in spirit being together. And we thank you for that. We thank you for, for the people that are behind the scenes that make this time effective and make this time to where we can come together. God, as we continue to worship and as we go out through this week, I pray that you will bless us and help us try new things. I pray that you will help us build relationships and guide us to our tribes and our community that can help us as we move forward. We thank you for everything that you do, and we pray these things in Jesus' authority. Amen. Amen. Amen.
So I will walk in your peace Your spirit lives within me My victory, my victory Your spirit lives within me So I will walk in your peace Your spirit lives within me My victory, my victory Your spirit, your spirit lives within me Once again, we are so grateful that you joined us at the table. Um, we're going to be continuing our conversation uh, tomorrow at Coffee with Clergy, so please join us at 11 a.m. or whenever works for you uh, as we dig deeper into these conversations. And if you have any, uh, any conversations, anything you want us to lift up and talk about, feel free to just drop them in the comments or send a, a message to the page and we'll do that. But with that, my friends, um, we are grateful for the ways in which God has blessed us during the service and will continue to bless us as we continue uh, as people of faith in this world. In Christ's name, 